Hello, and welcome back. Um, so, this is my first uh, Advent of Code video this year. Um, now, so unfortunately, Advent of Code is, um, my schedule is not really such that it's, it's, it's conducive to solve the problems in, in real time this year. Um, I'm usually busy at the point that the problems drop, so. Uh, I'm not really going to be competing for leaderboard spots or doing live solutions this year. Um, but I have been uh, solving the problems as I have time. Um, I've been posting the solutions um, over on Reddit. And uh, I thought today's problem, uh, day four, um, this is the, the, the first solution that I've come up with um, that I feel really benefits from like an area-based uh, approach. Um, so I wanted to do a walkthrough of today's problem and how I eventually solved it with APL. So without further ado, uh, we are on day four, admin of code. So if you haven't looked at the problem yet, um, this is, uh, <laughs> you're, you're playing bingo against a, a giant squid. And um, in your input, you have this series of numbers along the top, which represents the numbers that are um, uh, being called by the bingo master or whatever the title for that is. Um, and then you have a series of bingo cards. And as you work through the numbers, different uh, spots on the cards get marked. So, you know, here we're calling seven, four, nine. Um, and we mark all the applicable spots on the cards for, for the numbers that are called. Now, a card wins or has a bingo um, when, uh, when any of its rows or columns have been completely marked. So in the example, eventually you get a card where the whole top row has been marked, uh, meaning that, you know, all of these numbers have been called. And um, so this is a winning card. And then once you identify a winning card, you have the score calculation. Uh, and the score is the sum of all the unmarked numbers. So in this case, it would be uh, 10, 16, 15, 19, etc. And you multiply that by the number that was just called. Um, so in this example, the sum of all the unmarked numbers is 188. And the number that was just called is 24. And so we get our score. Now, the first part um, wants you to figure out uh, the, the card that wins first, um, and then you calculate the score for it. The second part, which, I mean, you won't know this ahead of time if you fall, solve the problem blind, but the second part asks you to find out the board that wins last, and you perform the same score calculation there. So, okay. Um, so this is our input. Uh, this is 04.txt. So as always, we will start with in git our text file. Um, this will give us a bunch of lines. Um, now, similar to last year, this problem is in a format such that you, you have these chunks of data that are separated by empty lines. So uh, here we have a nested array. Um, you know, representing all of our lines. But um, if you look here, you can see that we have these kind of uh, empty lines here that, that designate start and end of different chunks that we care about. So we want to split this up. And what we can do is we can say, uh, this will be a train eventually. So we can say zero equals uh, for each length. This gives us a Boolean vector. Um, so you can see that the first one has length greater than zero. The second one is an empty chunk, so it has a length of zero. Um, so it's a one here, and you know, so on and so forth. Here, everything's spread five numbers apart because our, our matrices or our boards are five by five. Um, so we can feed this to our um, partition function, our primitive. Um, and so we can just do write tack uh, primitive 
and uh, converse. And that's <laughs> not correct. Uh, hang on. So. Uh, should be though. Right? What am I doing wrong here? Do I not converse? No. This video is off to a good start. Um, so this does give me a Boolean vector. And the length of this is equal to the length here. Um, but for whatever reason, oh, yes, of course. Sorry, this should be not equals. Right. So instead, up here, I was selecting all of the empty cells. And here I'm selecting all of the cells where the length is not zero. So, phew. All right, we'll assign this to P. This is our problem input. Now, um, now we can begin sort of deconstructing things. So, um, first of all, we want our numbers. We need to parse these out and have these available, the, the numbers that are gonna be called. Um, so if we just take the first row of P and then disclose it again, we get this string and you know, we could uh, pull the digit characters out and evaluate those, but luckily, uh, comma is list concatenation in APL, so we can actually just execute this or, or evaluate, evaluate directly. And these are all numbers. So we're gonna call this NS for numbers. Um, and then to get our boards, uh, we can just do uh, one drop P, this gets rid of our first row, which is our numbers. Now we have all these chunks. You can see that there's a hundred of them, so we have a hundred boards. Um, and we can parse this by saying uh, for each matrix, for each row, execute. This parses everything out and gives us numbers. Um, and now we can mix the chunks together, which will give us something like this. Um, but we need to go one step further and perform another mix to actually get our matrices. Um, and we will call this uh, BS for boards. And you can see that the shape of BS is 100 boards of five by five matrices. Um, and then with that, we have everything that we need from the input. So I can close this. And now we can begin solving the actual problem. So my first, uh, my first solution for this problem was was um, you know iterative or recursive or whatever you want to call it. Basically, what I did was I constructed a function that took um, an empty set of boards on the right. So you can get that by saying um, you know uh, for each board uh, always zero. And you just get you get an array that's the same shape as BS, but has zero in every space where we had a number before. So you know I write a function that takes this and that takes our numbers, and then you know this is going to be a recursive function um, that takes the first number, um, applies it to all the boards, so marks the uh, the spots where um, where that number occurs. And then we check for a winner. And if there is a winner, we perform the score calculation. If there isn't, then we recurse um, with the new set of boards that we just marked, and then the, um, uh, the list of numbers minus the first elements. So that explanation sounds like a mouthful, and that's because it is. I think I still have my old solution in a file here, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, this is, so this is nums, boards, and then the second solution looks something like this, uh, which is just kind of
kind of ultra gross. And I eventually I simplified this, I think, on a different computer and ended up posting it to Reddit, but it's still um, basically like APL. I'm going to be honest with you, it is not super pleasant to do uh, like iterative or recursive solutions in, um, at least the way that I do it. Maybe if you're using like traditional functions or trad fins, um, maybe it's maybe it's nicer. I doubt it. Um, so we want to stick to like array based approaches wherever possible. And eventually I came up with an array based approach for um, this problem that I think uh, really demonstrates, you know, APL's strings. So, um, so let's think about our boards. Uh, so the shape of boards, we have, uh, we have 100 boards, five by five matrices. Um, and then the number of numbers that we're going to call is 100. So what if we said, um, let's, Let's let's kind of simplify this because this is going to be difficult to display with 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 all this stuff. Let's say um, let's say that we have boards. Um, you know, we just have a, uh, like a two 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 row iota eight. We'll give us something like this. Let's say that these are our boards, and then let's say that we're going to call numbers um, two and six. Let's say so we can get you know, we can figure out all the spaces where two is by just doing two equals. And this gives us a matrix um, that's the same shape as our um, as our list of boards, but now we just have a one where the two would be. Um, and, you know, we can do this for a series of numbers. Uh, this would be like something like this so we could say you know uh, this jot equals uh, for each you know two six so we're calling numbers two and six for each one we're going to take our our boards and we're going to compare it with equals now we get something like this so you can see in the first one the space where the two is marked with a one and then in the second one uh, the space where the six would be is marked with a one Right. Um, if we want, so so we want to avoid nesting if possible. We want to keep everything in these in these nice flat arrays. Um, we can do that with rank zero instead of uh, using each, um, and we get the same thing. But now the shape of this is uh, has an extra two, so it's two 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 instead of three twos. Try saying that five times fast. Um, but this is the same thing as the nested solution. So uh, yeah, so we have a two, um, or we have a one where our two would be, and then we have a one where our six would be, right? Now, the problem with this is that we're not carrying state forward. So if we're calling two and we're calling six, we don't just want these individual boards where each number is marked. You know, when we call six, we want to keep that marker from uh, from when we call to two. So ideally, in this second position here, this this set of boards, we'd want a one here in the two position that that represents that two was previously called. Um, and we can do this with a um, with a scan operation. So we can do or. Um, I forget the key combo for this. Oh, we can do or um, scan first. And so what this will do is this operates on the, the the first axis of our of our rank four array, and it's going to take those groups of boards and it's going to sort of sift through all of them and 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 apply uh, a boolean or operation at each level of the stack. And because it's scan, we'll get a board, um, we'll get sort of the, the intermediate boards. Like if we just did, if we just do a reduce first, take out the shape. If we just do a reverse, a reduce first, we get the we get the board that we want, right? So we have a one at two and we have a one at six. 
but we lose all those sort of intermediate states. And meanwhile, if we do a scan first, um, now we're talking. So we have, we have our first board where we marked our two, and we have our second board where we marked a six, but we're keeping the two marker. Okay? You with me? Makes sense? So, um, in this case, we have, uh, we have our numbers and we have our boards. And these are parts from our input, right? So we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to say boards uh, compose equals uh, rank zero um, numbers, All right? And this, if we look at the shape of this, now it's kind of interesting. So, so remember that the shape of boards, we have 100 boards of five, five by five matrices. This new array has an additional rank of, of 100 um, at the front. And this rank represents um, the, 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 the numbers that we've been calling, right? And so we can do just like we did with our example and we can do um, or scan first. And now, I mean, I have, you know, I have rows and cut and everything, but you can see that our boards get filled up at the end of the array, which is what we would expect. So it's, they start out empty, which again, expected. Um, so yeah, and the shape of this is uh, what we would expect. So for 100 numbers, for 100 boards, we have five by five matrices. That's when you think about the shape of this of this array. That's what I want you to think about. So uh, numbers, boards, five by five matrices, right? And we'll call this uh, uh, naming things is hard. We'll just call it like CS for cards, something like this. Um, and the great thing about having our data arranged in this way is now we can index into it and the indices are significant. Um, so think back to our problem, right? What do we actually need to calculate the winning score? Um, we need to get the sum of all the unmarked numbers on a particular board. Um, so we need like, we need an index of the board in question, right? We need to um, we need to figure out which board will win first. So we need an index for the board. And we also need to multiply. Um, we need to do some calculation to get some sum, but then we multiply by the number that was just called. So we need an index into the number array, right? And so if you think about this data structure, if we want to look at, let's say, like the 10th number called and the 23rd board, um, we can use the index function, or this primitive here, to index into CS to get that particular board, right? So, um, you know, if we want the uh, 30th number called and we want the 64th board, we can get that too. So all of our data is right there. It's pre-generated, so we don't have to do any recursive functions or anything to, to you know, generate it one step at a time. Um, Great. With me so far? Um, so let's think about what our, let's think about what our winning score function would look like. So assume that we have an index of the board in question, so we know which board is a winner, and we have an index of the number in question, so we know which number was just called. Uh, let's write a function that takes two arguments, one on either side. Um, on the left side, can't remember if I have this in mirrored or whatever, but <laughs> on the left side, my left, um, we have the uh, we have the index of the number that was just called, and on the right side, we have the index of the board that is one. So what do we do here? Um, we can index into boards with omega, which is the index of the winning board. And then we will um, filter, because remember we only want the unmarked numbers. So we'll filter that by using 
uh, alpha omega index CS. So CS or cards are all the intermediate states of all of our boards, depending on the number, and we're indexing into it with uh, the, just like I just showed you, with the, the, the index of the winning number and the index of the winning board, right? Um, but we have to use a not operator here. So when we filter uh, these ones, um, these ones will pull out numbers like they're used to, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> stumbling over my words. Ones are used to select elements in the array that you want. But in this case, we want all of the unmarked numbers. So we're going to use a not operator to flip that around and we're going to pull out all of the unmarked numbers. Um, and let's say that I did this for like 10 and uh, 45. So 10th number called 45th board, right? Now we're going to get an error here. And the problem is that filter, for whatever reason, doesn't work on arrays. Um, uh, doesn't allow a Boolean selection uh, with, 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 with the rank greater than 1. So we're going to use the over operator. Uh, this one's a little bit tricky if you haven't encountered it before. But basically what this says is um, we're using a comma here or rabble. So we're going to, uh, instead of having two matrices, we're going to rabble each side into vectors. And then we're going to use the, the, the selection operator. So, um, so we're going to rabble our, our um, uh, the, the, the board that we're selecting here, or the card, I guess, and that's going to form a Boolean selection vector. And then we ravel the actual board data, and then we're selecting the data in the, in the board um, that, was, um, that hasn't had things called yet. Right? So... I don't know, maybe the over is confusing. We can do the same thing if we just explicitly rabble here, right? But I think I think over is cool and I use it when I can. So <laughs> anyway, so these are so this is just an example, but you know, stick with me. So on the tenth number called on the forty fifth board, these are the numbers on that board that haven't been selected yet. And so we sum them. And then we multiply by the number, and we can do that by indexing into NS. And we multiply that by the number that was just called. So we have the index of the number that was just called. We index into numbers. We multiply by the sum of all of the unselected numbers on the board. And this gives us you know, some number, right? Um, so we will be using this function uh, later on to calculate our winning score. Now, the only thing that we have to do with this function is we have to determine, uh, we're going to work on part one first, so we want the first winning board. So we need the index of the number that was called when the first board wins, and we need the index of that board, um, uh, the first winning board, right? Okay. So. How do we check for a winner anyway? So we have CS, um, which again, it's a rank four array. Uh, we have numbers, uh, boards, five by five matrices. And so what we can do is we can say for each matrix, meaning that we're operating rank two, um, we can uh, try and determine if a particular matrix is a winner or not. And we'll just return a zero or one, depending. How do we tell if a matrix is a winner? Well, we can use uh, and reductions to determine this. So um, we can and reduce left to right um, to see if there are any winning rows. So if any row is completely filled with ones, and reduce will return a one, meaning that all those values are true. If even one of those values is not true, then and reduce will return a zero, meaning that there was, you know, at least one value there that was false. So we can and reduce left to right, covering the rows, 
and we can concatenate that with and reduce first, which is going to reduce top to bottom. So and reduce first will check our columns, and same deal. If a column is filled with ones, then um, uh, then we'll return a one in that case. If there's even one zero there, then you know we'll return zero. Um, okay, great. And then we have a vector. Um, we'll have a vector of ten elements in this case. So we have our five rows, zeros or one, zeros or ones, depending on whether they're all true or not. Then we have our five columns again, zeros or ones. And in this case, we can just or reduce across those. Um, because we only care if there's at least one winning row or column. So or reduce will tell us if there's at least one zero in this list that we've built. It's a big array. How big is it? Uh, this is 100 by 100. So how can we think of this? Because we were operating rank two and we output a single value, we basically chopped off the latter two elements um, of, our, of our shape. So now we're dealing with a rank two array, otherwise known as a matrix, and uh, it's got shape 100 by 100. What does that mean? So the coordinates still have the same significance. Um, each row represents a number to be called, and each column represents a particular board. So now we can index into this just as before, and we can say, okay, for the 10th number and the 56th card, tell me whether it's a winner or not. In this case, it's not, right? So this array actually contains everything that we need to determine uh, what the first and last winners are. So I'm gonna save this as a variable. I'm gonna call it rs for results. Um, and we want the first winner, right? Well, we can just use monadic where. So um, monadic where, if you're not familiar with it, gives you coordinates for your one values. And this works even with higher rank arrays like matrices and so on. And it operates in order, so it gives them to you in an order fashion, um, you know, row first, column second. So um, these are the coordinates of all of the winning cards. And because they're ordered, if we take the first one, these are the coordinates of the first winning card. What do these coordinates mean? Well, at the 23rd number that we've called, the 12th card has won. And with our score function that we defined way up here, m, these are the only thing, two things that we need to calculate the score. So we can just do m reduce. So remember that m expects the index of the, um, the index of the number to be called on the left, and it expects the index of the board on the right. And so um, if we reduce, we're just placing that function in between the two rather than having to you know, assign variables or whatever. And gives us a number, 6592, which is indeed our answer. Right? So no loops, no recursion, no nothing. We constructed this area of results by checking for winners. Um, and we're just looking at coordinates from that array to give us the, 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 in, the index of the winning number and the index of the winning card. And then we have a function to determine the score from that information. Okay. Now, to find the last card, it's a little trickier. So um, the last card, um, what that means is that if we and reduce across, um, no, sorry, not NS. Uh, if we and reduce across our result set, this is going to tell us um, uh, which numbers have, excuse me, have all winning cards. And you can see that once we start getting to the end, all the cards are winners. Um, so we can get the 
uh, we can get the index of uh, these values. And then if we take the first one, this is the index of the first number at which all the cards have won. So this is one piece of information that we need for our score function. Um, now, uh, in order to get the index of the winning card, this, unfortunately, if we look at the 89th row, this unfortunately doesn't give us enough information because, I mean, it's all ones here, right? Everyone's a winner. But if it's the first winning row, then if we go one row up by adding negative one to the, uh, uh, to the index, now, see this little zero here? This is the only zero in the row. So if we not this vector, and then we take the index, this is the index of our winning card, right? Now we need to assign, um, we need to uh, assign this, we can call it like ni for number index, right? So this is the, uh, so ni, 89, this is, the, this is the index into our number array. This is the index of the winning number. And so if we assign this to ni, and then we get our index for the winning board, now we can just put ni on the left and call our score function. And we get 31755. And... Uh, Oh, didn't I already solve this? Yeah, <laughs> three one seven five five. So that is indeed the answer. Um, personally, though, I think this solution is fine and is probably like the most uh, computationally efficient way to do it. I don't really like this assignment, and then you got to come in here and use it. Uh, is my camera centered, by the way? Close enough. Um, I don't really like this assignment and then you got to come in here and like put the number on the left it's kind of gross so we can do kind of an interesting trick think about what we're actually looking for in our result array we're looking for state changes we are looking for spots where um, if we follow it row by row we're looking for spots where um, a zero in a particular row becomes a one on the next one. This is the point at which a board flips from uh, from not winning to winning, right? After that, it's gonna be winning on all the numbers. So once a board wins, it's gonna be winning for all subsequent numbers. But this state change is the point at which it flips from zero to one. So if we have a matrix, and this is a two row, one column matrix by using this, uh, uh, what is this called? Table function. Um, now we can find occurrences of this in our result array. Uh, so the find function given, um, uh, well, for our case, we're just using matrices, but I think this works for higher rank areas too. But given like um, a small matrix and a big matrix, it will find occurrences of the small matrix in the big one. Now we get a bunch of zeros because it doesn't give you indices or anything. It just marks it as one. If you look in the example here, um, uh, I'm like pointing you know at the screen as if that means anything to you, but so you can see that um, it flips to one at the like upper left corner where that matrix uh, where that matrix is found. So we can get um, we can get all the coordinates of all of the state changes by just using monadic where. And then I think yeah. So so the length of the, these coordinates is 100, which makes sense because. Uh, 100 is the number of boards, and each board is going to have exactly one state change from not winning to winning. 
and these coordinates have all of that information. Um, so we are interested in the last board, so we can reverse and take the first item. This is the last board that switches from not winning to winning. And now we just have one problem, which is that um, because 0, 1 is a two row matrix, this is the matrix that we were trying to find, um, the match that it marks is actually at the zero point, um, which is not what we want. We want the uh, we want the index at which it wins, right? So we have to do one, zero, plus to move from that not winning to winning state, right? One, zero, plus, and now we can just do, oh, we can just do mreduce again to get um, the same output, 31755. Uh, so, what does this all look like put together? I think it's pretty short. So um, let's see. We can start at the top. So P looks like this. This feels good to take out this like crufty imperative, you know, recursive code, whatever. Um, and then uh, ns is just like that. Um, bs, or our boards, looks like this. And then we can we walk through all this, blah, 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 blah. And then we constructed cs, like so. So first, we construct all of this information. No. And now we are ready to begin solving. Um, so we have our score function, like so. Um, and then we constructed rs, which we can use immediately to get our part one solution. And now that we have RS, I'm going to go with our second solution that we built up here, where we are finding state changes in the array, and that's going to be part two. Um, so, oh geez. So if we take this, paste it in. Yeah, those are the correct answers. So this is the solution. Um, I think I posted this on Reddit um, after the imperative one. And I think that this looks much better. It embodies airy thinking pretty well. So just to recap, we parse our input by breaking it apart into um, chunks based on zero link segments. Uh, our numbers are just directly executed. Our boards um, are mixed together after you know executing to get the numbers. And then we have this cards concept, which um, for each number, we compare uh, against all the boards, and then we do an or scan first. This gives us all the interstitial board states. We have a winning function, which given the index of the winning number on the left and the index of the winning board on the right, will return the, the proper score. Um, and then for each matrix in our cards, we perform this win check, which is reduce left, reduce down, and then or reduce across those. Um, we find the index of the first winning board, and then we apply our score function. That's part one. For part two, we're looking for state changes from not winning to winning. Um, we find the indices of those, we take the last one, and then we correct a little bit uh, by adding one to the row so that we get the correct index, and then again we apply our score function. So I think that this is this is a pretty good array-based solution to the problem. Um, I think that it's something that's sort of unique to APL. And hey, as long as you're working in like high-ranked arrays and sticking to primitives and stuff, APL can be pretty pleasant. Um, so that is my video. I may do additional videos 
Um, again, not doing live solutions this year, but I may do additional videos um, about particularly interesting solutions or you know things of that nature. So stay tuned um, and thanks for watching.